Okay, so C, our first note, is button six. So first button down on this 30 button instrument. If you've got more than 30 buttons, it may not be the first button down. It might be the second one down, but you just have to experiment by listening. It sounds like this. It's on the push. And so we play it three times. It's a crotchet and a quaver. That's the first beat. You count that one, two, three. The crotchet comes in on beat one and the quaver comes in on beat three. So one, two, three. Remember counting in nines, okay? So this essentially is your first beat. And then we play another C as a crotchet. And then we play this note A, which is button number nine. So in position, little finger pull. And then we push as we run down in notes G, E, C, just straight through a C major chord there. Those are the notes that make up the chord of C major as three quavers. So you count that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That gives you that rumpty tumpty tiddly. So push, 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 pull, push, push, push. Okay, and that's your tune of your right hand. Now, the left hand, all I'm doing here is just jabbing chords. I'm not trying to do an umpa or anything like that. I think it works better just as single little jabby staccato chords. So this is what it's going to sound like with the left hand. Now, we've got the same chord played twice. We have an E, a C, and an octave below that C. That's buttons four, three, and one. So finger one, finger two, finger four, play together. Now, both times you play that chord as a crotchet, so it comes in on beat one and lasts for beats one and two, and then it comes in on beat seven and lasts for beats seven and eight. You can see some rather complicated looking rests on that bass clef, quaver rest, dotted crotchet rest. It's just because you have to keep this all mathematically correct but don't let that worry you you can see where the chord comes it comes with this c here and this g here okay and just a nice little short jab as you play the right hand tune and of course these notes are bass clef so they're different notes in the bass clef are not the same as the treble clef and if you're not sure about that there are lots of sheets that i've i've given you already and if i haven't given them to you get in touch and i'll make sure you get them because you need to be able to read the bass clef and the treble clef for my Anglo concertina music. Remember, this is for a CG Anglo. It'll be the same thing for a GD, but just lower pitched. Pull your bellows out before you start, and this is your first bar. I'll just play it once more. Okay, here we go. Yeah. 